Well, we've got a birthday to celebrate on the Connors yet again. This is the third episode in a row that is dealt in some way with somebody's birthday. Let's talk about toilet hacks and the management track. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my Connors review for uh, the latest episode, Season 6, Episode 8. Uh, and this is uh, Episode 101 of the series overall. Yes, we hit that milestone 100th uh, last week. But uh, this one, another birthday-themed uh, episode. That's not really, I guess, the theme of the episode. But uh, last week, we dealt with Beverly Rose's birthday. The week before, uh, or the episode before, we dealt with Ben turning uh, 50. And that being a big deal for him, well, Dan turned 70 in this one. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about all of that and how that relates to this week's plot. Uh, but before we do that, let me welcome you into Dan Reviews. It. Thank you for finding this video. We do uh, the Connors Reviews every single week that there is a new episode. And it uh, looks like the next few weeks, there will be plenty of them. Uh, there's supposed to be 13 episodes total this season. And this is just episode eight. Uh, usually TV seasons don't go into June, but... With the writer's strike, uh, I'm not sure if we're going to see uh, some new episodes in June or if they are going to bang them all out uh, before the end of May. But in any event, we have uh, a few episodes left here in this season. Um, but please consider subscribing uh, to Dan Reviews It here. Uh, we have the Connors videos uh, in a playlist on the homepage, so you can easily access uh, just the Connors videos if that's what you're looking for. But I do movie and TV reviews uh, for other shows and new shows and all that sort of stuff, uh, and you can check that out as well on the channel. I try to post something just about every day. Uh, but comment below as well. Let me know your thoughts on this particular episode. All right, again, this is called Toilet Hacks and the Management Track. This was uh, directed by our old buddy Jody Margolin Hahn. Uh, she has directed so many episodes of this series, and uh, so far she's done about half of the ones uh, just from this season. And then uh, Jaina and Mitch Hunter uh, are the credited writers for this one. We've seen them uh, pop up before, certainly in uh, other seasons. I think this is their first one for this particular season, but in any event, uh, they've, they've certainly done other uh, episodes of the series. All right, so Toilet Hacks and the Management Track. So uh, this episode starts with Dan, um, and, well, the family actually planning on this big 70th birthday celebration for him. Uh, but Louise comes in. We haven't seen Louise for a few weeks, um, and we actually got a little bit back to uh, her plot line from earlier in the season that we'll talk about. But she comes in and says, look, you know, Dan has been very specific in saying he doesn't want to celebrate. Um, and Darlene's like, yeah, we know. Like, that's why we do it. It's funny. Um, so Dan actually comes back uh, in and says, look, you know, uh, I, I'm going to be uh, collecting my uh, Social Security and also my retirement and all of this stuff, uh, you know, kind of double dipping because I'm so poor that, uh, you know, I'm finally able to take advantage of these uh, government programs or whatever. So he's in a good mood and turns out kind of wants to celebrate. Um, so they, they you know, push out the balloons and everything that they had hid originally and, uh, you know, redid the cake. But um, the, the plot with, that's kind of it for the birthday. Plot. I just thought it was weird that now for the third week in a row, we're getting a birthday. Um, but anyway, uh, that's sort of the end of that plot. But that uh, sort of, re he realizes uh, through Mark coming in, and saying, "Hey, sorry, I was late. I had to, uh, you know, fix these these toilets that the kids uh, in the dorm took the seats off of. And I'm a handyman now, but I don't know how to do this. So uh, this gives Dan an idea to uh, not only teach him, but to maybe teach some other people in the neighborhood, earn a little extra money, uh, because he discovers that through, um, you know, all of this time that they've had the house, they only have about ten grand left uh, to pay on it." And if he can do that, um, you know, then the house is, is finally theirs. And I, I'm a homeowner. I, I check my um, my financials on this house, you know, every so often, uh, probably more often than I should. But at least once a month when I'm about to make a payment, I'm like, OK, you know, how much do I owe left? And has the value of the house gone up or down at all? And, and all of these things, uh, you know, I, I check. And so the idea that they have still not paid this house off after what has to be, well, let's see. I mean, they were in the house originally in 1988 when the show began, but as far as we know, they've had that house for even longer than that. I can't remember if there was a specific episode where they said, like, when they bought the house, but um, 
you know, all, all the kids were already born by then. So they may have bought the house, uh, you know, when DJ was born or whatever. So um, l let's just say mid 80s, they've probably had the house since, right? So at this point, that's 40 years we're going back uh, with this house. And a lot of, uh, you know, mortgages are 30 year mortgages. So that definitely tracks, you know, with, with the financial situation of this family over the years, um, you know, having to refinance and, um, you know, whatever. Um, there's a lot of ins and outs of, of owning a house. I still don't quite understand, but, um, but we remember a few seasons ago uh, on this show where they talked about, uh, potentially losing the house. Um, that was the end of one of the seasons, season two, maybe. Um, and, and they never really did well, I guess, I guess they a little bit went back to that plot, but in any event, um, so he starts these, uh, classes where he's teaching, uh, you know, different things, not just, uh, you know, how to fix a toilet, but, uh, you know, a whole host of things we assume from all these people in the neighborhood and they've, you know, told their friends. And so more and more people want to do this. So he's working all day at the hardware store, then doing these uh, classes for the neighborhood, um, you know, during the evening hours and he's, you know, double and triple booking, uh, you know, some of these classes and, uh, Louise is getting a little concerned. She's like, look, you know, you're 70. Um, you're going to wear yourself out. You're so close to paying this house off. You don't need to do it, you know, tomorrow. Let's just, you know, maybe do one class a week or, or two, if that's good for you. Um, but let's not, uh, you know, kill ourselves here. And, um, you know, they, they jokingly have a, a moment with their uh, sciatica at the end of the episode. And uh, Dan ends up falling asleep in the car uh, in the driveway. And uh, look, I've, I've been there. I've burned the candle at both ends. Um, really most of my adult life, I've often had uh, two or three jobs going at once, usually, um, you know, a full time and two part times or what have you. But um, there was one year uh, around Christmas time, I actually had five jobs and you know a couple of them were only like one or two days a week but still I, it adds up right so um you know there are lots of times where i'll be working 70 80 hour weeks um luckily i've paired that back a little bit don't work that much uh anymore but up up until maybe you know a year ago i was doing that um six months ago even so um yeah other than covid where things sort of shut down for a little bit um i had one job um, cause I was working from home at that point and, you know, uh, was able to, to, to do that all through COVID, but that was my only job for a little bit. But other than that sort of year of COVID, um, you know, yeah, I, I often have multiple jobs. Um, and I, you know, I'm much younger than Dan, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still in my forties. So I, I can't imagine doing that, uh, in, into my seventies. Um, you know, it's, it's already worn, I think enough on me, uh, over the years. So, um, I, I like that plot line because it's certainly very relatable and certainly, uh, for people in their financial situation where, you know, you, you see that light at the end of the tunnel of, oh my God, I can, you know, after 40 plus years, I can finally pay my house off. This is amazing. Like, let's, let's just f try and fast track this and whatever. Um, but you know, I also think Dan likes to be a teacher. You know, and I think he likes to, um, you know, have something to do. Yeah, sure. He likes to sit on the couch as well and drink beer and watch TV. But, um, you know, there's no more kids in the house. You know, Darlene, Becky and Becky's daughter all live at Darlene's house, um, you know, with with Ben and, uh, you know, Dan and Louise are at the house by themselves. So I, I feel like part of that uh, drive for him to do this is not necessarily just the extra money, but. Um, you know, it, it gets him out and about with people. Um, but of course this sticks in Louise's craw a little bit because she is running for sp school board. So here's the plot, um, you know, from a few weeks ago when we last saw Louise that we're kind of going back to now. And I'm really glad about this because, um, like I said, during that uh, review, uh, for that episode, I really, really want to see, um, some of this election stuff with Louise and uh, maybe some of the campaigning. There could be some fun episodes around that. And um, the next, the titles of the next few episodes are already up on Wikipedia. And in two weeks, there's an episode called Campaign U-Turn and a Hard Right. Um, so I assume that's going to be talking about Louise's campaign in a little more detail. So I'm excited that they've, you know, sort of, uh, you know, sowed the seeds here for that. And we're going to maybe get a whole plot line about the campaign. So far, it's just been, you know, little mentions, um, 
you know, a few weeks ago was when she got the idea. And now in this one, they talk a little more about it and how she's, she doesn't even have any kids at the school or whatever, but, uh, you know, technically Beverly Rose isn't, well, I guess, I guess through marriage, Beverly Rose is her granddaughter, right? Yeah. Um, but in any event, she doesn't have any kids of her own at that school. And, um, you know, Dan has Becky and Becky has Beverly Rose. So, uh, she was kind of miffed that Dan actually blew off the meet and greet with some of the other, uh, mothers and some of the other candidates, I guess, or whatever. Uh, they didn't, they didn't go into too much detail about what it was, but, um, some sort of like meet and greet for the campaign. Um, and Dan basically blew it off to do, uh, another one of his classes. So that, you know, made them clash a little bit. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, about the end of that storyline. Um, they, they both ended up on the couch, like I said, kind of, uh, trading off hot water bags, uh, for their sciatica, which my dad has sciatica issues. So I know all about the sciatic, uh, stuff and I, that, that totally tracks. Um, you know, he's in his, in his, uh, early to mid seventies, I guess now. Um, and, and he's had those issues for a few years. So kind of funny that, uh, you know, Dan and Louise both kind of trading, uh, medicines back and forth, you know, with, with the hot water bags, but all right. So on to the other plot line, uh, which I liked, uh, much less actually. Um, and that is the management track. Um, and we start that one with Darlene basically, uh, complaining that there's not a lot of healthy options at the cafeteria where she works, uh, at her, her son's school, Mark. Um, and by the way, we did see Mark briefly, uh, in this episode, just at the beginning, I, I, I know I mentioned him already, but, uh, everybody, let's see, wait, was Ben in this one? Yes, he was. So everybody in the main cast, uh, that gets credited in the intro was in this episode. And then we threw Louise in as well, which is always great to see. So, um, rare that we see everybody. Sometimes Mark is missing. Sometimes we don't get Harris. Um, but in any event, so that was good. But, um, She's saying basically, look, uh, you know, I, I'm at my wit's end here. I, I feel bad serving this, you know, sort of junky food to these kids. We can do better. Um, so she ends up going to this woman's office who I guess is in charge or whatever. Um, and I don't know who the actress is. It seemed to me like it would have been uh, a perfect role if this woman was still with us for Anne Mira to play. Anne Mira is uh, Jerry Stiller's wife and Ben Stiller's mother. Um, it, it just had that sort of, um, I, I don't know, just that sort of characterization. I, I could very well have pictured Anne Mira doing that role. Um, I've seen the actress uh, that did play this woman uh, in, in other things, but I, I couldn't name her for sure. But, uh, but Darling goes to her and basically says, hey, look, you know, what can we do about this? And, uh, and she says, well, look, you know, if you're so obsessed with it, why don't you become the manager? We don't have a manager. Um, so you're hired. Um, and in that conversation, we learn that, uh, you know, she's going to be replaced on the line. So if the management thing doesn't work out, she's going to be fired. And then uh, essentially Mark will not get a free ride anymore to school. Um, so that is a little bit of a, a, a sticking point. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but uh, they may bring that up in a subsequent episode. You know, she doesn't work out as manager. But look, we know she's been manager before. She was uh, a good manager at Wellman Plastics a few seasons ago. And um, I guess that's the first time we've really saw her uh, attack a management position, right? Because with Ben, Ben was her boss, uh, at the magazine. And, um, I'm trying to think back, like, I, I'm trying to think if she was ever a manager that we've seen. I don't think so, but, uh, you guys tell me in the comments, you're always so on top of these, um, you know, plot lines and stuff. And sometimes I get a little lost with it, but, um, but in any event, she was certainly one of the managers at Wellman and uh, she did very good there. Um, they, they sort of, I think screwed her out of some stuff, but hopefully that does not happen here. But in any event, so they go to uh, her house. She has like a little powwow with the rest of the staff, which is mostly a bunch of kids, but also this kind of weird, creepy guy uh, that added to some, some comedy. But, uh, you know, basically, hey, here's, you know, what can we do? Um, give me some ideas, whatever. Nobody seemed to have any. But uh, in any event, she ends up, you know, lamenting things at the lunchbox. We haven't seen the lunchbox in a while. And this leads back to a plot line from 
the season premiere where Harris uh, is eventually going to take over the lunchbox or maybe has already started that transition. Um, I forget exactly what, what Jackie kind of said, but, um, but she's going to end up running the lunchbox, I suppose. And uh, Jackie and Becky and Harris were all there. Um, and, uh, Louise was there too, I guess, too, right? That's uh, how we learned about the thing with the, uh, the meet and greet. Um, so they were all there. And Darlene was kind of lamenting, oh, you know, I don't know what to do. I, I have, um, you know, these ideas and I want to give all this this food to the kids, um, you know, by tomorrow. But where am I going to get it from? And, you know, these grass fed hamburgers and, um, you know, coleslaw and fries and stuff. And um, Jackie is like, well, you know, we could, you know, maybe do something here eventually, but not, you know, this is I, I'm too busy right now. Can't do it. Harris is, is not going to be able to really handle it. Um, you know, well, Jackie actually says Harris won't be able to handle it. Ask Becky and Louise. Like, maybe they can help you. I can't. Harris, I think, is is a little green for that. Um, and Becky basically turns her down and says, no, I've got other stuff going on. Um, you know, so Darlene asks Harris. Harris wants to prove herself. So she says, yes, I will do this. Um, but we know that she's going to be in over her head. Jackie certainly knows she's going to be in over her head. Um, and so the episode essentially ends, uh, that plot line anyway, with uh, Harris struggling after three hours. Um, you know, she still hasn't even made half the amount of hamburger she needs to make. The coleslaw is still not made. The potatoes have not been peeled. So Jackie comes in to help. Um, and, and that's kind of the end of where we reach that plot. And the reason I, I like the plot line just fine, but the reason I like it a lot less than the Dan's plot for this week is it just didn't seem complete. Um, I, I it seemed like, I don't know, I, there should have been five more minutes of this episode. And I know that these days, you know, we have 21 minute episodes as opposed to the original Roseanne, which had 25, 26 minute episodes. I, I get it. Um, and this is something that I think the show struggled with um, in the beginning, in Roseanne season 10 and the first maybe even two seasons of The Connors. I think the writers were having an issue trying to fit everything in. So it ended up being like either, you know, plot lines that kind of just got left on the floor or they would rush through it. And so certain scenes would be like 35 seconds and then we move to the next thing. Um, and I really think they finally hit that balance maybe in season three of The Connors. But this episode... Um, this plot line specifically, it just seemed um, cut short. Like, I, I don't know. I, I guess I kind of wanted to see more of um, Harris and Jackie working on everything. I wanted to see maybe the next day uh, what happened with that. Maybe I'm alone in that. Um, you know, let me know in the comments. Did that bother you uh, like like it bothered me? I just, I felt like that was a good plot. And maybe we'll, we'll be going back to that well. You know, obviously, if Darlene got that promotion, maybe, uh, you know, we will have a lot more with that in, in the coming weeks. I don't know, but it just seemed to me that that specific, you know, task of Harris trying to do this, um, it, it just sort of ended like, a, it, so, so it felt kind of flat for me in that regard. But I do like that this episode kind of brought everything around, um, from really the whole season. You know, we talked about Mark, um, you know, being the, uh, whatever the the janitor the fix it guy for his uh, floor we talked about louise uh running for the school board we talked about harris taking over the lunchbox um obviously darlene in the cafeteria so uh, everything really like did kind of come together in this episode so i can respect that um but i just i wish we had a few more minutes with the the Darlene and Harris uh, plot line there. I, I really would have liked to see that. In terms of the comedy, um, I do think this was probably a funnier episode than we got last week. Last week, I think, was more of the emotional episode, which I loved. Um, I, I thought it worked very well, and I, I gave it a, a high grade. This one, I think, is a funnier episode, but not as good of an episode for sure uh, overall. But I did get some laughs. And, um, you know, Harris... Look, I, I know a lot of you in the comments over the years have uh, said you didn't really like the Harris character, this and that and the other thing, when she was more of a teenager. I think even the dissenters have kind of come around a little bit because I've gotten other comments saying, you know, hey, Harris is finally, uh, you know, coming into her own or, oh, I, I don't hate Harris as much this season or whatever. Um, I think Harris has has always been a pretty decent 
uh, character in terms of how she's written. You know, she might not be the most likable, certainly in her teenage years, but w was Darlene, you know? I mean, we, we already kind of knew Darlene before she went into her, um, you know, depressed depression and, and black period and where she would kind of snap at everybody. And, um, you know, personally, I really related to that you know, back, back then. And then I guess still probably do, but, um, but you know, we already knew that character. We met Harris when she was an angsty teen. So I think that put maybe a lot of people off for me. It's always been fine, but I like that she's really coming into her own here as uh, we're moving forward with these seasons. And I think she got some laughs from me in this episode. Um, but in terms of the MVP, as uh, we wrap the uh, review here, boy, I don't know. Um, I mean, even though I, I didn't love Darlene's plotline, I think that probably got more laughs from me than Dan's plotline. Um, and I do like where we're going with, well, I like, I like both these, uh, subplots. You know, I, I like that Dan's going to be teaching, uh, you know, fix it stuff. I like that Darlene's moving up into management again. I think we, we might see some, some humor there. Um, so I, I don't know. I guess for this week, I will give it to, to Sarah Gilbert, um, and, and the Darlene character, um, even though I, I liked that plot line less, but it's only because I wanted more of it. Um, so I, I can't necessarily fault her for that. I think, uh, the most laughs came from her plot line, uh, the interaction with, with her and the woman, uh, that she went to see in her office. I thought that was funny. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll give it to Sarah Gober for this week. As the episode on a whole, um, Again, it was definitely funnier than last week's, but um, something was definitely missing for me with that uh, the plot with the cafeteria. So I believe Toilet Hacks and the management track with a B minus. Definitely uh, not among the best ones of the season, uh, but I think we had one lower than that earlier, so maybe not the worst either. But uh, many, many more weeks to come. Uh, hopefully we get all of these uh, next episodes right in a row. I know the next few weeks at least will be new episodes. So we'll look forward to that. But uh, please, like I said, comment below with your thoughts on this episode and uh, give a subscribe. Uh, that, of course, uh, helps the channel out tremendously and I do appreciate it. So, all right, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time on Dan Reviews It. Bye.